At this point, most of you probably know that in addition to gaming, I'm also a huge fan of visual novels. Pretty much every time I pick one up, I get completely hooked. So today, I'm going to recommend five visual novels that I think you should read and why you should read them. A while back, I made a video about five visual novels that I recommend for new readers. Click the thing in the corner of the screen to watch that one. I will not be repeating any of those visual novels here, even though I obviously highly recommend all of them. Alright, so with that, let's begin. Number 5. Fault. Fault is a really neat Gaslamp fantasy adventure story, Gaslamp being essentially the magical version of steampunk. The biggest draw for me is how it handles the use of magic. Now, one thing about me is that I love, love, love a well-executed magic system. I like when it has rules, limitations, and makes logical sense. But I especially love when the writer takes the time to figure out how exactly magic would influence the world outside of the obvious. The way Fault does this is that different parts of this fictional world have different levels of magical concentration, and it almost seems like the story genre changes depending on the location. The main characters, Princess Selphine and her bodyguard Ritona, live in a highly magical area. The whole place is pretty much as close to Utopian as you can get. There's pretty much no poverty, very little conflict, and most everyone is happy with the monarchy. It reads very much like a high fantasy medieval story, but then they get transported to the other side of the world, an area with low levels of magic. Now obviously, these people cannot utilize magic to aid their lives like Selphine's people can. So by necessity, their advancement has largely been industrial, and not only is their economy different for this, but so is their entire social structure. This is a more rough and tumble kind of place with a more dirty hierarchy. However, things start to rapidly change as the foremost scientists of the nation start to learn how to harness what little magic they can acquire, and instead of channeling it directly, they use them as batteries to power machinery, essentially substituting magic for how we would use electricity. This section of the story takes on these more steampunk-esque tropes, and it feels almost like an entirely different story, but in a good way. And I won't spoil it, but there's also some very neat philosophical story beats focusing on identity and the nature of consciousness. But there is a reason I put Fault first, and therefore lowest, on this list. It's not done yet. Currently, developers Alice and Dissonance have released the first two installments of the story. Right now, they're working on a canon spin-off, and right after that, we'll begin work on the third and presumably final installment of the series. So because the story has not yet concluded, I can't really say how it all comes together and if it works on a structural level. But what I can say is that I'm enjoying the ride so far. You can get both installments individually on Steam. Number 4. Highway Blossoms. Highway Blossoms is both a realistic modern adventure story and a Yuri or lesbian romance story. Now you may be thinking that this is one of those stories where they hyper-focus on the more adult aspects of the story, but you couldn't be further from the truth. While this visual novel does have a few adult scenes, they're just a piece of the larger picture. After all, most serious relationships in real life do develop a sexual component to them. But interestingly, the first time I read Highway Blossoms, I hadn't downloaded the 18 plus patch and I didn't even realize that anything was out of place. The story works with or without these scenes. Highway Blossoms tells the story of two girls, one who is on a road trip to go see a music festival in honor of her recently passed grandfather. The other breaks down in the middle of the road after going off in search of a treasure that was referenced in a recently unearthed journal. Now I won't spoil any of the major story beats, but the two end up traveling together and even though the premise of the story is that they're on a treasure hunt while heading towards the music festival, the real story is about these characters, their inner struggles, their flaws, and their personal growth. There's also an interesting dynamic with a rival group who's hunting for the same treasure as them, though this ends up being a little bit different than you'd initially expect. And to top it all off, it's set in a location that I really don't see in visual novels. Midwestern United States. Since most visual novels are Japanese, you typically see them set in Japan, a mixture of Japan and Western US, or an entirely fictional land. Seeing a firmly Western setting is a breath of fresh air, and it's honestly something I'd like to see more of, if only to broaden the scope of what visual novels can be. And the last thing I'd like to mention is that the game has a few meme modes that you unlock after your first read-through. One of them is a wonderfully memefied and condensed version of the story that takes only a few minutes to read. The other is basically hard mode. How does a kinetic visual novel have a hard mode, you ask? Well, it makes you complete the story in real time. Whenever there's a time skip in the story, you have to wait out that time in real life, including an 8 hour timer every time they go to sleep. It's really stupid, but I love that they added it in. You can get Highway Blossoms on Steam with the 18 plus patch available on the developer's website. Number 3. Shining Song Star Nova I think it's fair at this point to say that I'm a pretty big fan of developer Love and Space. Even though their stuff isn't what I'd consider a masterpiece, I always find consistent enjoyment of their products, be they video games like Sunrider or Idle Empire, which I reviewed by the way, check it out, or their standard visual novels like Homeward. Shining Song Star Nova is about a group of idols in Japan. 
Idols are basically singing, dancing J-pop groups. The best comparisons would either be boy bands in the West or the K-pop industry. Now, you don't actually have to give a shit about Idols to enjoy this visual novel. I didn't, and to be honest, I still don't. I'm not even a huge fan of J-pop in general. But one thing that Love and Space are very good at is having interesting characters. One really neat thing about these characters is that they give a bit of a twist to the common anime character tropes. Each of the girls models her stage persona around one of these tropes. There's a tsundere, there's a chunibyo, which we in the West would call a fucking weeb, there's the pure innocent one, and so on. However, their actual personalities, while somewhat similar, are their own. And more importantly, they all have their own flaws and insecurities that aren't directly related to their respective tropes. For example, Aki is a former preteen idol whose whole shtick has always been that of the little girl, or lolly. Because she's been playing the role for so long, she sometimes slips into it without even thinking. And she also has this overwhelming determination to push herself to her limits in order to achieve success, even at the cost of her physical and mental health. These characters are all interesting. They all have good, engaging stories that intertwine well with the meta-narrative of an up-and-coming idol group trying to make it big. And there's also this really neat perspective on mental illness in one of the routes that I won't spoil here, but I really liked it and it made me think, which is something I love in a visual novel. You can get Shining Song Star Nova on Steam with the 18 plus patch available on the publisher's website. Number 2, Nekopara. So yeah, this one has a bit of notoriety to its name, and it's actually just recently gotten an anime adaptation. Nekopata is one of those titles that I initially downloaded because of the memes and because, well, sexy cat girls. What can I say? I'm only human. Now, I'm sure you're thinking that this must be some degenerate fetish story designed for people to jerk off to. While I won't deny that the sexual elements are played up for marketing reasons, what I found when I read it was a lovely slice-of-life romance story about a pastry shop owner and his two cat girls. But I do have to admit that the sex scenes are completely over the top, and they actually end up being a massive tonal shift that felt kind of jarring at times. There's lots of screaming, bodily fluids, and the protagonist has such a ridiculous degree of stamina that he could probably qualify for the X-Men. But that ridiculousness is confined to those sex scenes, and the rest of the visual novel is, dare I say, quite charming. The two cat girls, Chocola and Vanilla, are absolutely adorable and they really steal the show. And as the romance progresses, I found myself really believing it. It was heartwarming, it was cute, and at times it was gut-wrenching. And interestingly enough, though the two sequels each added two new kitties into the mix, I never lost that sense of, this feels real. Somehow, in between the messy sex scenes, there was a genuine story that I believe was made with love and passion. Now one thing I do have to mention is that I'm not a huge fan of the business model. Namely, the 18 plus content does not just come with the game free, you have to pay extra for it. Of course, you still get all the great story stuff without it, but I've always been an advocate of playing the uncut, uncensored version of any media. That being said, there is a workaround without having to support this business practice. Since as I mentioned, Nakapata has achieved a degree of popularity, you can go to your favorite <coughs> research website, perhaps a hub of some specific type of video content, to find the adult content uploaded in full, and you'll be able to tell when this adult content was supposed to be put in because the skip is pretty jarring. So you can still experience it without having to incentivize that behavior with your wallet. But that one gripe aside, Nekapata is a wonderful little story and I couldn't believe how much I actually liked it when I read through it. It's actually just lovely and I'd highly recommend it, even for those who don't have a gentlemanly appreciation for cat girls. Number 1. Sankaku Renai, Love Triangle Trouble Okay, let me start out by saying that I absolutely love this visual novel. It's a romantic comedy with heavy emphasis on comedy. It's probably the funniest visual novel I've read to date, and I loved every second of it. Sankaku Renai is basically a parody of the standard erige visual novel. See, a lot of erige VNs are pretty much just vectors for porn. They have terrible, boring stories, and there's a lot of common tropes in use. Sankaku Renai basically says, let's make fun of it all. There are jokes left, right, and center, and even though not all of them landed for me, most of them did, and even the crappy jokes contributed to the overall lighthearted and fun tone of the story. But even though the game is hilarious and packed with jokes, that doesn't come at the expense of an actually decent story. Each of the characters fulfills their own trope and stereotype, but also has characterization behind it. It's kinda hard to explain, but I got a sense that the writers were going for characters who were a joke, but not just a joke. There are real stories behind all the memes and humor. I don't think they explored them to their fullest, but at the same time, it's hard to do that while also being this self-referential meme fest. But that's not meant to take anything away from it. It manages to create a unique experience that kept me thoroughly entertained, and even made me catch feels a couple times, even as I was laughing at how they were making fun of the sex scenes during the sex scenes, pointing out how certain elements of erige sex are entirely unrealistic while still following the stereotype, how they'd randomly break the fourth wall to explain why the scene they were in made no sense. And the biggest thing I have to praise is how incredibly well translated it is. 
As a fan of visual novels, I've come to accept that since I cannot speak or read Japanese, I have to deal with reading translations between two wildly different languages. Most of them are pretty good, but some of them can be god-awful. Sankaku Renai blows it out of the water. The story is filled with memes, puns, and silly references, but I'm sure that the Japanese versions of all this humor don't really make sense in English, and vice versa. The translators clearly took the time and effort not just to turn Japanese into English, but to adapt and transform it into something that can appeal to an English-speaking audience. Seriously, Sankaku Renai reads like it was written by a native English speaker, and the translation team deserves so much credit for that. Sankaku Renai is an experience. It's weird, it's funny, and at times it's heartfelt. But above all, it's definitely 100% on my list of recommendations. You can get Sankaku Renai on Steam with an 18 plus patch available on the publisher's website. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Also, let me know if you've read any of these visual novels or have any suggestions for me. I upload every Monday, so make sure to check back in next week. Well, with all that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.